Good evening, Kenya. Thank you for choosing to watch your favorite channel. This is a roundtable media conversation with the President of the Republic of Kenya, President William Samoy Ruto, with different media organizations. Those included here are KTN News, we have TV47, Nation Media Group, we have K24, we have KBC and Citizen TV. My name is Sam Gituku from Citizen TV, and I want to give my colleagues an opportunity to introduce themselves. Thank you very much, Sam. Mimi naitua Ali Manzu, natuka KTN News, na tuko hapa kwenye mjadala wazi na mwishimi wa Rais Dionia Leo. Good evening. My name is Grace Korea Kanja from TV47, which is under Cape Media Limited. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Wafula, an editor with the Business Daily. I represent the Nation Media Group, and thank you for having us this evening. I'm Jamboni. Mimi ni Daniel Kitu, kutoka K24, Media Max Network Limited. Nami ni Kamchemenza kutoka shirika la utangazaji humu nchini KBC. Karibu mtazamaji na shukran vile vile rais kwa kutualika. Right, and Mr. President, the last time we met on the 4th of January, you said you'd have wanted to introduce yourself. So please go ahead. William Ruta is my name, and I work for the people of Kenya. <laughs> Great. And Your Excellency, we're here to have a conversation about um, a review of your presidency, which started some 15 months ago, but also to be also specific to what has transpired in the year 2023. Of course, you've had a lot of activities. You've attended different events. You've spoken a lot about your focus, your vision for the country. And tonight, we want to spend some time to answer the questions of accountability, what you've been able to do, what you've not been able to do, and all the promises in the coming years. And of course, we'll start with a question about what has just happened to the Kenya shilling, which appears to be on a free fall. Vyema kabisa, asante sana, Sam. Mwishimi wa Rais, nadhani iniwazi kwamba kichochea uchumi huwa ni sarafu ya kima taifa na jinsi na vufanya kazi yake katika taifa lolote lile. Hapa nchini Kenya, kusema ukweli sarafu ya dola imekuwa ikipanda ni kama free fall kwa sasa yani hakuna udhibiti ama control yoyote inayoendelea kumbuka mheshimiwa rais hii pia inachochea katika biashara za uagizaji bidhaa hapa nchini biashara zinazoendelea hapa nchini e, wafanyabiashara wanaotumia dola na inachangia sana katika uchumi kuendelea kudidimia kwa sababu unakuta sarafu ya dola iko juu na inadhibiti ulitangaza awali kwamba katika siku zichache zijazo dola itaonekana ikishuka chini lakini imekuwa ikienda hamsini, miamoja, hamsini na moja, miamoja, hamsini na tatu. hivi mheshimiwa rais ni mikakati ipi ambayo uko nayo kwa sasa ambayo itakuwa ni ya karibu sana kuhakikisha kwamba unadhibiti hii hali ambayo inaathiri uchumi kwa sasa bila shaka uchumi umepanda zaidi gharama ya maisha iko juu bei ya bidhaa muhimu ziko juu sana kwa sababu kiwango cha dola kiko juu na hakiwezi kudhibitika Asante sana. Eh, Ali Manzu na ndugu wenzako ambao mmekuja kunitembelea. Eh, kwanza nataka niseme eh, nimefurahi sana kupata mtaba mmoja na nyinyi tuweze kujadili mambo ambayo ni ya muhimu kwa taifa letu la Kenya. And maybe just to answer you so that uh, uh, we are all in on the same page. Um, the issue of uh, exchange rate is a factor of many aspects. Um, as you know, uh, I came into office when there was a lot of fluid activity in the, in the space. We had a serious situation caused by COVID. We had a big war in Europe. We have a huge drought, climate change, caused by climate change. And all those factors combined to create a situation globally that uh, increase the price of commodities that we import, increased uh, demand for the dollar. And in fact, what has happened is that the Fed, that is the, the Central Bank of the US, if you wish, has increased interest rates from 0 0.25 to 5.25. In fact, in the history of the Fed, this is the steepest 
interest rate increase in its history. What that has done, and, and because every country tried, including Kenya, mm -hmm. every country tried to enhance liquidity mm -hmm. because of the crisis, the, the, the COVID, the, so everybody tried to increase money in supply. In the process, we created a very serious situation of inflation. And when inflation ran away, in fact, for some countries, inflation has gone all the way to 40%, especially in our continent. Our inflation, inflation was almost double digit. It was nine point something. So what the world has done, and which Kenya we are doing, is uh, to manage inflation, to manage money supply. Because if you don't manage inflation, you run into a lot of problems. So what has the US done? They increased their interest rates. Mm -hmm. And because of the increase of, uh, on interest rates, there was the demand for the dollar. People who were, had, had invested outside the US began to see an opportunity in the US. And so there was a lot of dollars leaving Kenya, leaving other countries, going to the US. What does that mean? It reduces the supply of dollars. And therefore, the, as compared to Kenya shillings, then the situation went up. Everybody expected that the US would ease on interest rates, on, on, uh, on, on, on increasing their own interest rates. They didn't. That was the expectation of the whole globe. That's number one. Number two, in Kenya, we were maintaining an artificial exchange rate. You had the central bank governor, Mr. Thuge, say that this interest rate of, uh, this uh, exchange rate of 130 that we were maintaining was artificial. I mean, it was maintained using our foreign exchange reserves. What happened? We split, uh, the government of Kenya spent $2.6 billion. That is almost 400 billion Kenya shillings in you know, supporting the Kenya shilling so that it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go to its actual <coughs> exchange rate. How did they do that? You sell, uh, you sell dollars, Kenya, Kenya uh, say, uh, reserves. reserves. You sell it to the market so that you increase supply of dollars at a price that is not, uh, that, that is not the, the, the actual price, a subsidized price. So but is it, Mr. President? This is the central bank. Uh, central, central bank central selling bank of to the Kenya. market. Yes, the central bank of Where Kenya. Where are they getting it from, the dollar itself? Our reserves. You know we have reserves. Yes, the reserves the, the as reserves, of that time were just over four point something months. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is exactly what happened. That's why those reserves came down to three point something months. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Yeah? President. Today, and, and let me just finish. So because of that, because of that artificial support, when I came in, that is unsustainable. And it is partly why we have a, we have a crisis in our economy, because we were doing things that have no market support. So what I decided is we cannot, because the, it was anyway going to end up in a bigger crisis. So we stopped the artificial supply of dollars into the market. That's number one. We also, and that is why the rates went up. It is better for the rates to be up and they are not supported by artificial. We are not losing any foreign currency as a country. And what has happened is that Imports to Kenya have gone down because our exports are now much more attractive. In fact, the people in the tea sector, the people in the coffee sector are earning much more than they were earning before. So what has happened is we are now keeping the exchange rate at a market rate that we are not artificially supporting it. Yes, Mr. And, President, we will, we will and, get to. And what will happen is once the international uh, uh, space, economic space, eases out, the dollars then, the, the exchange rate will then come down 
uh, sub, uh, con consistent with our own management. Thank you. Um, so in April last year, um, you did say that you will bring down or the shilling will come down to about 115. This is an interview on accountability. That shilling has moved from 120.37. We are looking at 153.78 by Friday. And this is the central bank official rate. We also know that this is not the actual rate that actually Kenyans are spending when they go to buy the dollar. You promised that the government to government deal would fix this problem. Has it failed? And if so, what really happened? Let me tell you, my brother, if I hadn't structured the G2G deal, the dollar today maybe would be at 250. That's how serious it would be. Why? Because the US Fed kept on increasing their interest rates. And you know very well that we can do the things we have done as Kenya, but we are also subject to the global economy. The G2G deal has worked. If we hadn't experienced an increase in the Fed, the dollar would be at 120 today. But because they kept on increasing the uh, US exchange rate, our exchange rate, if we hadn't done the G2G uh, transaction, if we were still going to the market to look for $500 million, 60 billion Kenyan shillings every month, and in fact, many banks, by the way, were waiting for the dollar to be at 200. Yeah, they will have to wait for a while because we have done things that nobody expected would be done. And we have managed to make sure that although things are not going the way we had planned, but they haven't gone overboard. Mr. President, um, when did the US Fed begin raising the interest rates? Maybe, maybe two years ago, immediately after the serious uh, the COVID situation, that is when they began to, to Meaning increase. they were already doing this by the time of your election? They, but they were not at 5.2. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah, they had in begun. Terms of what was happening. They had begun. I ask that because in April this year, that's yeah. when the government to government deal started. Correct. And I remember your deputy, Rigadi Gashagwa, saying that um, those people that have dollars in their houses, it is time to sell because yes. you're just about to suffer loss. Yes. Yourself, you said that you see it going below 120. Correct. 115 dollars even. Correct. So if you have all this information, why then promise something that was also bound to the changes in the global economy? You see, and now you're saying it could have gone up to 200. Which figure do we trust? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, my friend. We live in a, in a, in a global environment. And, and I know you're saying that because uh, when we structured the G2G, many people and, uh, keep saying, but this is what, what's happening in this country. This is what's happening in this country. Fuel today is at diesel 200 shillings, 201 in Kenya. It's exactly the same in our neighboring countries, Tanzania, Uganda. Many people think that fuel in Kenya is artificially managed by government of Kenya. Mr. It is President, not. We'll, we'll come to that. So, so, we'll come no, to the that's, I'm your... just giving you as an example, yeah. because so that you understand mm -hmm. where we are. And I want to say this without fear of any contradiction. If we had not tamed already we were having stockouts here of fuel because of the lack of dollars. Because all these oil companies were running around. When I came into office, the first people I met were the oil companies. And they told me, look, we, 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 we can't find the dollars. You know, although we are being told uh, dollars is at 120 something, 130, we can't find it. You know, the dollars are not there because the rates were artificial. So we came to discover later 
you know, that, oh, this dollar was being managed artificially. And that is how we realized that $2.6 billion of government money had been used, sold to banks to support an artificial uh, exchange rate that was actually going to go the opposite direction. Mr. If we hadn't been managing the uh, dollar exchange rate artificially, today we would be talking a different story. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. you've been in office for 15 months and right. you wouldn't want to go to what happened in the previous regimes. And that's why you are taking I am us. not talking about any, any previous regime. I'm just giving you the facts. artificially what you're talking about. Um, let us remain here and we're looking at even the region in terms of the East African region, look at even the Uganda shilling and the Tanzanian currencies. They aren't depreciating as fast as they are, as Kenya is doing. In fact, uh, some of those currencies are actually appreciating as we speak today. They do not have a government to government deal, but they are somewhere, they, most of them import from Kenya. The question is, what has been the problem with the government to government deal, and why has it not been able to fix the slide in the Kenya shilling? You know, the government to government deal is not the only thing that will fix the exchange rate. It is one of the many things, right? We are a different economy from Uganda. We are a different economy from Tanzania, right? We have much more imports. We import much more for our industries because we are a different economy for all our other services than Uganda or Tanzania does. We are not in the same category economy-wise. We are a middle-income economy. They are in a different category, not like us. So you cannot compare them and us. Then you are not comparing the same, uh, same stuff. And I don't want us to talk about other countries because uh, then I don't want us to say which country is better than which one. Then Mr. Mr. President, let's nice. talk solutions. Yes. Mm. Um, because this basically drives almost everything, mm. right, in the country. So the question would be what you are doing to strengthen the Kenya shilling. Precisely. Mm -hmm. That now you're talking. Three things. Number one, you have heard me clearly. In the last budget, I said we are going, there are things we are importing today which we should not be importing. We shouldn't be importing cement. We shouldn't be importing steel. We shouldn't be importing furniture. We shouldn't be, there are many things we are spending huge amounts of money to import when we can manufacture them locally. That is the reason why we have put a levy on the import of these unnecessary imports of products into Kenya so that we can stem the export of our foreign currency and manufacture those uh, items locally. Number two, we are importing 500 billion Kenya shillings every year of food items. 500 billion from edible oil to maize to rice to all those 500 billion US dollars we are importing. Uganda does not import that much food. Tanzania does not import that much food. We are the only country that imports that much food. Why? Because we haven't paid as much attention to agriculture. And number two, we need to understand that while Uganda 80% is, is arable with rain, Kenya only 15% is arable with rain. Tanz uh, Tanzania is a completely different story. Almost 60% of their land has rain and is arable. Ours only 15%. That's why we are importing $500 million uh, of food into Kenya. So what do we need to do? We need to pay attention to our agriculture. The reason why we have invested, and that is why in the manifesto that I sold to the people of Kenya, agriculture, modernization, mechanization is one of the big tickets that I decided that I'm going to do. We have changed the trajectory on our stable food. Today, we are producing more in terms of maize, which is our stable food. In fact, my plan is that by next year, we shouldn't be importing maize into Kenya. We, we should be producing enough 
This year, we have increased our production of maize by 40%, more than we did uh, last year. Last year, we produced 44 million bags. We are producing 61 million bags this year. And it is because we have done interventions. Fertilizer that was being sold at 7,000, we are now selling at 2,500 because we are supporting production. We are full scale into the space of edible oil that we are importing. I am working with different governors. This year, we are working on uh, sunflower, we are working on soya, we are working on palm oil. W the president of uh, Indonesia was here. We have agreed on a whole chain because they, they are, they are uh, the biggest country that we import edible oil from. They are going to work with us to grow palm oil in Kenya. That project is being led by uh, county governments. In fact, it is being led by uh, Gladys Wanga, the county governor of, uh, of Homa Bay, because it is in the coastal region and around Lake Victoria that we will have the biggest uh, uh, space and the biggest opportunity for us to produce palm oil. We are going to uh, do more around uh, sunflower. We are going to do more so that we also stem the tide of loss of dollars into other jurisdictions because of food imports. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I am doing. Number Please three, we are also, I am also looking at how are we going to get more foreign exchange into Kenya? That is why I am working round the clock to make sure that we have more Kenyans working in Kenya, in foreign companies when they are in Kenya, and we are also connecting Kenyans to opportunities outside Kenya. For your information, just so that I conclude, um, I made a commitment in our plan that we want to increase foreign remittances coming into Kenya, hard currency that comes into Kenya from uh, foreign remittance from $4 billion to $10 billion. It is the reason why we just concluded a diaspora investment conference here in uh, KICC this week. It is the reason why I have signed a bilateral agreement, uh, labor agreement with Saudi, with, uh, with uh, UAE, with Germany, with uh, uh, Canada, and many other countries we are exploring possibilities. And for your information, as a result of those what I have been doing, between now and next month, January, the first 10,000 Kenyans will be leaving to go and work in foreign countries so that they can support themselves and support Kenya. Because many countries have established a strategy on how to grow our uh, to grow their foreign exchange earnings. Now, on, on the other hand, uh, maybe still on the government to government uh, deals, uh, is it giving us as a nation the desired uh, results? Absolutely. Eight months down the line. Absolutely. In fact, that same uh, um, government to come government product or program, many countries are seeking to know how they can copy. That, uh, that program, because it is giving us what we couldn't have gotten in a different way. Then how can we control the prices now? You see, fuel, it's been up and down. Like right now we're talking of 210, 212 per liter. Ma Ali yes. <laughs> you heard me say this. The, the, the price of fuel is not determined by the government of Kenya. It is not determined by any company. It is determined by the producers. That is why today the price of fuel in Kenya is the same price in Uganda, is the same price in Tanzania, because we buy from the same place. Uh, uh, rice, the oh, wow. You know, I have heard people say uh -huh. the president should reduce the price mm -hmm. to 150. Uh, 150. How are you going to do that? Unless I take taxpayers' money and go and subsidize you know, subsidize, <coughs> which is removing money from this pocket and putting it in this other pocket. Moshimura is... 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 Moshimura
eh, serikali haina uwezo mkubwa kuhusiana na bei ya mafuta. Itakumbukwa kwamba wakati wa kampeni kabla ya wa rais, ulisema kwamba bei ya mafuta wakati huo wakati wa utawala wa rais Mstafu Uhuru Kenyatta ilisababishwa na wale ambao waliita cartels na zaidi ukaeleza kuhusiana ushuru mwingi. Nini kilibadilika? Hakuna kitu imebadilika. Mambo ya ushuru nimepunguza ushuru kwa mafuta. Nimepunguza ushuru ya road development levy. Nimepunguza ushuru ya railway development levy na ilikuwa kwa budget. Tumepunguza eh, ushuru mara nne in di four different categories. Mm -hmm. But you see that is not sufficient to reduce the price because the price of oil itself is going up because of the producers. Ni sawa kusema kwamba ni sawa kusema kwamba changamoto za kimataifa zinaadhiri bei ya mataifa nchini. You see changamoto za kimataifa na bei ya, ya fuel ya kimataifa imechangia. Mhm. Mm Amesema huyu mrembo kwamba ni tumeongeza bei ya ya VAT. Ni mm -hmm. kweli? Mm -hmm. Tumeongeza bei ya VAT lakini tumepunguza ushuru zingine. Mm -hmm. Tunaongeza bei ya VAT kwa sababu gani? Kenya tuko katika kiwango inaitwa uh, middle income economy. We are in the same category as South Africa, we are in the same category as uh, Morocco, we are in the same category as Tunisia. I want you to check their taxes. You know, because our taxes are now at 15.6% of GDP. 15.6% of GDP. Taxes in South Africa is 27% of GDP. Taxes in uh, Morocco is 32% of GDP. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to answer the question because, you know, the people of Kenya are being pushed and being told, look, you are paying more taxes than other countries. Is that true? That is not true. No, we are paying Let's the same to taxes come to, to like, uh, like all countries yeah. that are in our same category. And let me tell you the difference so that, I, so that you can take the chance. Let me tell you the category. If we go to the market, the countries that are in LDCs, they get a lower interest rate than those of us who are in, uh, in, in, in middle income. Middle income. So we, you cannot compare them and us. We are in a different category. And for your information, countries like France, their tax as a percentage of GDP is 45%. We are only at 15.6%. That's the difference. Now, Mwishimua Rais, bado tuko kwa hili swala la shilingi na dola. Hmm. Umezungumzia miradi tofauti tofauti hapa ambayo mmeweka katika mpango wa kuweza kupunguza hiyo dola ambayo shilingi iweze kuwa na thamani. Uh, swala la mahindi umesema by mwaka ujao, aprili hapo pengine, uh, swala la mahindi tutapunguza kuimport na mambo kama hayo. Ukatajwa maswala kuhusu pia edible oil uh, na miradi ambayo ipo. Lakini mkenya pale nje anajiuliza watasubiri hadi lini hii shilingi iweze kupata thamani yake uh, ili maisha iweze kuwa sawa. Wakenya, wakenya watazubiri kwa sababu dola sio uh, serikali ya Kenya inaamua. Dola ni biashara ni kati ya zile vitu tunauza na vile tunanunua. Ndiyo tunapata ile uh, uwezo wa kudhibiti. Kwa sasa kuna vitu nyingi tunaagiza kutoka nje. Na ndiyo nimesema ili kupunguza vitu ambazo tunagiza kutoka nje lazima tuanze kuzitengeneza hapa Kenya. Simiti nimesema ya kwamba na tumeweka katika budget ya mwaka huu ya kwamba simiti itakuwa inatengenezwa Kenya kwa sababu tuko na kampuni tutapanua kampuni ambazo tuko nazo ndio tuweze kuokoa dola ambazo tunatumia kuagiza simiti. Chuma tutaanza kutengeneza Kenya tayari tuko na kampuni ya kutosha kutengeneza Kenya furniture tutatengeneza Kenya Kwa hivyo... chakula tutazalisha Kenya ndio tuweze kupunguza ile dola ambazo tu, ama e, pesa ambazo tunatumia ya kigeni kuagiza vitu ambazo zinakuja Kenya ndio tuweze kuwa e, ku manage ile exchange rate Kwa hivyo ya... mheshimiwa rais hadi hapo mkenya ataendelea kukanda mizeka Hadi hapo unajua sasa hakuna miujiza itafanyika <laughs> unajua sasa wewe unataka kufanya miracle <laughs> <laughs> you know this is what is happening globally 
Mr. President. We, are, we live in a global economy and we right. need to understand. Mm. And, and it is very important for us sitting here to tell the people of Kenya that because, you know, many people are saying the price of fuel. I want to tell the people of Kenya the price of fuel is not controlled by the government of Kenya. That's why I was saying yesterday, many people are praising me that, oh, you see, we have now begun to see the prices of fuel coming down. I told them, no, Musini Sifu, I have not, hakuna kitu nimefanya, ni wale wanatuuzia wameanza kupunguza bei. Na mi nataka ni waeleze wa Kenya. Bei ya mafuta hapa Kenya. Ni sawasawa na bei ya mafuta. Mr. Mr. President, we'll get to fuel. We'll get to fuel. Get to fuel. fuel. Uh, we shall get to that, Mr. Uh, President. But I want to ask something my colleagues some asked earlier. So did you promise what you couldn't deliver? I promised in the context of where we are, if things had stayed constant, we would be, I would have kept my promise. But you know, we live in a situation that things are changing. What, 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 the world, we what, live what in a global, in a global, in a global environment that the prices are going up. You cannot keep unless, and I don't want to lie to the people of Kenya and say, let me spend public money so that I look like I am keeping my promise and I am doing the wrong thing. I ha it is better for me to be brutally honest and say, this is not possible. If what, we, we, if may what have made, we may have made a commitment, yeah. but because the situation changed and everybody knows what that situation is today, the prices of commodities went up. You had Uhuru Kenyatta say he was not the one who started the war in Ukraine, you know, and all the other things. But that is, that is okay. Yeah, no, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, if you were to, what, what, if we were must, to what we must be honest to ourselves is, yes. are we managing, are we doing the best to manage the situation so that doesn't flip and go in the wrong direction? And I want to tell you, yes. Mr. President, um, I thank you for that response. And to be brutally honest, just to pick up from uh, where you are sitting, um, I think Kenyans know that it's actually true that government has a big role to play in terms of the fuel prices. It's not true that government doesn't play because 40% of the taxes, between 45 to 40 to 45% of the fuel price in Kenya is actually government taxes. So government has a big role to play on that. Um, I think we need to move to energy now that uh, we no, are no, as energy. Just before that, Paul, um, Mr. President, I hear you and I've listened to you carefully saying that if things had remained constant, and I was hoping that you'd explain what is that constant, because you also say if 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 the if the U.S. dollar had not been the exchange rate was not, if if the U.S. interest rate was not increased. It was increasing it, already. It was increasing, but you know, it has reached a place where everybody thought it was going to stop. But the next three, four increases were completely unexpected. Even today, many, all of us expected that they would begin to come down, but they've decided to keep it. Okay, and Mr. And, President. And, that, uh, and you see, yeah. while uh, my good brother here said government has a uh, has, uh, no, 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 lot I just, just wanted us to, to say, say that. A, a lot of say on taxes. Yeah. That's true. You see, my friend, while it is true, that I can tomorrow say, let us reduce the, uh, the taxes. It is also true that tomorrow, for every seven, for every, every 10 shillings I collect, every 10 shillings, seven shillings go to paying debt. Are you telling me that you want me to do what other countries have done, to default on debt? Because that's the only option I have. I, I can say, okay, let us pay less, and then let's tell the international community, Kenya cannot service debt. Is that what you want us to do? That would be very- and Mr. Reckless. President, that's what I was asking you. So because, precisely, yeah. you, you cannot say, it is simplistic for you to say, yes, the government can, 40% uh, of fuel is taxes. The government can decide tomorrow to lower the taxes. That, that's but what, you know, those taxes we are collecting, we have education to fund. First, we have seven shillings, for every 10 to pay debt, which Ruth William Ruth did not accumulate, right? Number two, the three other shillings, we have to pay our children to go to school. We have to manage our security. We have to manage our health. We have to manage everything else. We have to pay our teachers. So are you telling me, I go and tell teachers, I don't have salary for you this month because I have to reduce 
the price of, uh, of, uh, of fuel. Do you think that would be reasonable? Ma Could maybe just, know? maybe just, uh, Mr. No, President, just on, that, on, on that issue, just, just hold, hold on to that thought a bit. Because yes. if you look at the prices of fuel, what has happened is that we are looking at consumption. If I look at the last data, the last three months data, consumption of fuel has actually dropped to an, a five-year low. And if you look at even carry the collection, they missed the target, they were off the ordinary revenue by about 31 billion Kenya shillings. So what is happening is, yes, on, our, on this end, you have a plan to collect taxes, but these taxes are not coming through to, to Kenya Revenue Authority. And on the other end, you are killing the economy because you have people not moving, consumption because oil and electricity basically will tell you for your, what is happening for, in the economy. For your information, your figures are wrong okay. because if you look at the taxes that have been collected from fuel, they've gone up. That's, that's the correct position. So the, the other taxes are the ones that they have not met the targets. And why haven't they met the targets? Because I gave them a very high target. Mr. President. Because I wanted them to do much more than they are doing. Mr. President, let's just take a look at the data. So don't, don't, uh, don't misrepresent represent facts. Let's that, talk that's about the, correct position. the data you have from the Kenya Revenue Authority, mm. because they're the ones who collect the revenue in their yes. report. In the first quarter, ended September 2023, the oil taxes, the target was 84.6 billion shillings. They collected 77.7 .7 billion shillings. Similar period last year, it was 78.5 billion shillings. That's a drop of about 800 million shillings. So indeed, for quarter one, there has been a reduction. If you had to speak about the volumes, the same quarter, Diesel in 2022, quarter one, it was 1.15 metric tons, 1.5 me million metric tons. This time round, the same quarter, it is 1.05 metric tons, a reduction of 56,000 metric tons. For petrol, 770,000 for quarter one, 2022. Quarter one this year, it is 742,000, a reduction of 28,000 metric tons. So there has been a reduction. The difference comes in because the taxes are higher, more expensive than it was last that year. That is not the correct position, my friend. Those let are me, figures from KRA. Let me explain to you. Okay. We import fuel for Kenya, but 40% of that fuel goes to Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda, and sometimes all the way to DRC. With the Eastern DRC get fuel from, from, from Kenya, right? So, so when you look at the figures, you must know that there is a component of fuel that is not sold in Kenya, that is sold outside Kenya. That, that you must, that you must know. It's about the revenue, isn't it? That, that's what you must know first, yeah. right? So when you are looking at the quantities and the numbers, you need to factor that into, into, into the equation, right? And secondly, we are beginning to look at other alternatives. A lot, more, a lot more people now we've connected to electricity, people who are using diesel. In fact, this year, most of our thermal energy uh, electricity generation has gone down. Why? Because we have moved the number of Kenyans on electricity from 2.3 in uh, 2013 to now 9.4. So we have more Kenyans who, have, who are not using diesel. We have more, Ken we have more uh, companies, we have more infrastructure that who are using diesel that now we have connected to electricity. That explains some of the reduction. If you look at- uh, but, but this is a direct consequence from energy, the Finance Act of energy, 2023. That is not the, that's, not the correct, that's not the correct position. I am telling you- KRA is reporting more and more, President. Exactly, so that, what I, why I'm telling you, the quantities that have gone down is because more people are not using diesel, especially in the big companies, if you look at what, what we are saying. Because we have made it possible for them to use electricity. We have reduced, in certain cases, electricity for industrial power, so that instead of them powering their mechanism using diesel, they are now using electricity that we are generating. And it is partly why we have connected more people to electricity. Je mheshimiwa rais tukizungumzia tukisalia tu kwa swala la bei ya mafuta Dio. na hii uh, project ama tunaweza sema hii G2G deal ama mpango wa G2G deal. Correct. 
um, azma yake ilikuwa ni kupunguza hata bei ya mafuta. Je, yeah, did we achieve the required re results? Wewe ndio umesema azma yake ni kupunguza bei. Azma yake ilikuwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba number one, we have fuel. Because when I came into office, people were queuing in petrol stations for fuel. True? That was the case. Now, nobody is queuing in any petrol station. We have continuous supply. Number two, half the companies in Kenya, fuel companies, had closed down. Today, no company is operating outside the net. Every company has fuel. Number three, local companies were buying fuel in US dollars. Today, they are buying it in Kenya shillings. If you ask any Kenyan company that is selling fuel, our oil marketers across Kenya, they are mm. very happy with the deal we structured. And number three, we have removed pressure on the US dollars. In fact, when I came into office, there are many companies who are considering relocating from Kenya. Why? Because if you can't have foreign currency to pay your dividends for companies that are not Kenyan, there, there was a backlog of almost eight months of companies that had not paid dividends for their investors because there was no dollars in the market. Today, I have made sure that though the dollar is high, but it is available. Mwishimu Arais, eh, katika siku kuya jamuhuru ulisema kwamba uchumi wa taifu umeamarika. Kabisa. Siku chache kabla ya hotuba yako. Naibu Rais Regari Gashagwa alikuwa amesema huende kachukua muda hata wa takriban miaka kumi hivi katika kushughulikia maswala muhimu ya wananchi. Wakati fulani waziri wa fedha Henry Rotich akasema kwamba hapana. Njuguna. Waziri wa fedha eh, Njuguna Ndungu akasema kwamba hali ni ngumu kwa taifa hasa kulipa eh, mishahara na maswala mengine ambayo yanahusiana na fedha. Hali ya uchumi kwa vipi mheshimiwa Rais na, na hii Tukisalia hapo, tukisalia hapo uh, Prime Sears Salam Dawadi amesema 3 years you know to quote him verbatim he's forecasting a difficult 2 to 3 years asking Kenyans to bear the burden so just like um Kitu here is asking do we during your manifesto launch Mr President you called it the plan is there a plan there is for economic a plan? recovery because you are saying this your deputy is saying another thing um treasury cs a different thing, mm -hmm. prime cabinet secretary. I mean, this should be one government that Nani is in one voice. Hapo uh -huh. Nani and, the, Nani and Kenyans kweli. themselves, Mr. Wa President, wa Naumia. Wa Kenya wanaskiza pia, huyu wanasema hivi, huyu wanasema hivi. Tuliza boli. <laughs> Tumelituliza. Nani nasema hivi. Kweli. Eskizeni, nimesema hivi. Nataka kuwajibu njini wote watatu. Mm -hmm. Mimi nimesema, if you read my statement, I said our economy today is out of debt distress. And that is the truth. For your information, if I didn't step in, let me even say, if I wasn't president, the kind of decisions I have made, very difficult decisions, you know, very painful decisions. Decisions that I know they will cause pain, but it is better we make those decisions now than get Kenya into that distress. There are almost eight countries in our continent, including one that went into debt distress. I don't want to mention countries, you know them, last almost three weeks or, or one month. That is the worst thing that can happen to any country, to go into debt distress. We, have, we are now out of debt distress. Our economy is stable, but the difficult part is still there. We still have to navigate. All we have done is to avoid the cliff, right? That we have avoided because we have negotiated, uh, we have put bricks on expenditure. Mm. We have uh, negotiated a, a good package with the World Bank, with IMF, with development partners, with bilateral uh, countries, China, Europe, and everywhere. And that's why I have been on the road uh, so many times. People ask, what is he doing? It was necessary for me to step in and stabilize so that Kenya does not go into debt distress. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you what Ndungu was saying. He, Ndungu was in parliament. That's actually where that's I was where headed. He says the Ndungu government was, is was broke. In, Ndungu was in parliament. Mm. And he was being pushed. Oh, you need, you need to do this more. Ndungu was telling them, look, 
We don't have the kind of money you're talking about. We don't have money to increase this and to increase this and to increase this. That, that, that is the correct position. Mm. We have, and that is why we are cutting back on many aspects, because this is what is required at mm. this point in time. It is the difficult decisions we have to make now so that tomorrow looks better. Mm. Mwishimua Raisu, ufafanuzi wako wa uchumi kumi marika ni nini wakati ambapo wakena wengu wa mamikia garama ya maisha. And, and, you, see, and you see, and you see, what Musalia is saying mm. is for us to be able to get to a place where we can say we are good, you know, that things are moving, there is money in the pocket, we can feed ourselves, we can do everything, it takes time, mm -hmm. right? How long? And it takes time. Because <laughs> How long, you, Mr. How long? President? You want me to say three months, five months, one year. No, you're quoting relax. your prime cabinet oh, secretary relax. who says relax. two to three years. Relax. Yeah. Because About we are not in charge of all the factors that will finally determine where we are going, let us give ourselves time. No. But I want to promise the people of Kenya that we will sort this situation out. Mwishimu Arez, unaposema uh, utumi umemarika. Ufafanuzi wako utumi kumemarika ni nini? Hasa wakati ambapo wa Kenya wanalamikia garama ya maisha. Number one. Nani vizuri umeuliza garama ya maisha? Garama ya maisha inachangiwa na vitu itatu. Ya kwanza ni garama ya chakula. Right? Na nikisema uchumi, uchumi iko na uchumi ya tumbo. Nataka ni kuulize. Na wa Kenya wenzangu. Tumefanya lolote kupunguza garama ya chakula? Yes. We have done major steps. The price of food items is today lower than it was a year ago. It is a fact. <coughs> Lakini, of course, it's not convenient for certain people to accept. That's number one. Number two, globally, where is Kenya? Uchumi wa numbers, and these are not my figures. <laughs> We've brought down inflation from nine point something to now 6.8. Those are figures, global figures of the World Bank. Number two, our economy is growing at 5.4%. Not my figures, World Bank figures, right? In fact, they, they quote Kenya is the 29th fastest growing economy globally. Those are figures out there. Of course, many people don't want to accept. I know that there is still no money in people's pockets. Uchumi wa mfuko bado. Ndio bado. Yeah? Are we doing are we doing something about it? Yes. That is why we are spending more money in education. Yeah? We are putting money more money in education. In fact, this year we are putting an extra 120 billion in education to do what? To make sure that we reduce outlay by uh, uh, Kenyans to fund education. Number two, we are putting more money in health. That is why we've passed four laws. What do we want to do? We want to make sure every ordinary citizen has a health insurance. Those who are paying 500 will come down to 300. We are going to make sure that we don't leave nobody behind. That is why I am going out of my way to create jobs. Today, as I talk to you, because you need to put money in people's pockets. Today, as I talk to you, 120,000 people are, housing, uh, are working in our housing program. Today, as I talk to you, we are working on export of labor, making sure that we connect Kenyans to jobs abroad. Today, as I talk to you, we are expanding the space of digital jobs. We just passed the law so that we can create ICT hubs across Kenya. I have already negotiated for digital jobs Globally, Kenyans are very good at it. We are going to spread opportunities so that people can put money in their pockets. So, so that's why I'm saying we, ha we need a plan. You know, it is easy to say, uh, let us do quick fixes. We have been doing quick fixes for a long time and we haven't gotten it right. Many people wanted me I to do a quick fix the challenge by, by subsidizing UNGA. I told them, Wish let us not subsidize UNGA. Let us, let us promote 
uh, production, mm -hmm. we will eventually get the right results better. Mweshimu wa Raisa, awali kulikuwa na mazingira uh, mazuri pengine ya kufanyia biashara. Tunavoona sasa, sijui kama palikoseka wapi pengine wanaza kutueleza, manake kulikuwa na mazingira mazuri ya kufanyia biashara. Uh, kuna takuma mbazo zimetolewa wata na FKE na dhani wakisema kwa baku na makampuni ama kuna wa Kenya takriban elfu sabini ambo, ambo wameachishwa kazi. Kwa katika serikali yako mshimiwa, palikoseka nini haswa pale mpaka mazingira kufanya kazi ya kawa magumu kiasi cha kwamba asilimia thelatini themanini na ane ya wa Kenya wanasema kwamba maisha ni magumu. Na hizi ni takuima mbazo ziko zaidi ya hamsini kwa mara ya kwanza katika mkenya kusema kwamba maisha ni magumu na pesa hayonekani. Na tukisalia hapo Mr. President because it's just based on what she said. Are you aware that 87% of Kenyans, your people, Mr. President, that is 9 out of 10, have opted to reduce on personal expenditure because of the current economy. Watu wana opt kutokula, which is what we're talking about, uchumi ya tumbo. They are foregoing food because of the current um, situation. Good. I want you to read a clip or even a text. It was in the standard. Ten months after Kibaki became president, the same number of Kenyans said Nak and President Kibaki had made their life worse than ever because Kibaki decided to make the right decisions, not popular decisions, right? Ten months after he was president. We are in the same space. But let me tell you the following, that um, it is true. We are facing a difficult situation. We are facing a difficult situation because that is the global situation. But are we doing something about it? Yes, we are doing something about it. Is it bearing results? Yes, it's bearing results. The price of food is coming down because of our intervention, by God's grace. The global economy is appreciating what Kenya is doing. Let me go to FKE. FKE said 70,000 Kenyans have, have, have lost jobs or have, have gotten out of jobs. Part of those 70,000 Kenyans, for your information, are teachers who are working in private schools who we have hired as government. Now they are teaching in, uh, we have hired 56,000 teachers into, into uh, as teachers. We have hired an additional 120,000 people working in our housing program. We have a plan to make sure that we keep increasing. We have only 31, 31 sites of uh, our housing uh, program. We have another 34 that will be rolled out uh, uh, the first quarter of next year. By the end of next year, we will have between 200 and 250,000 Kenyans working. So the economy is adjusting towards where we want to go. We do not want to be an export destination for others. We also want to produce what, what we should be producing. Quavo. And that is why we are, we, are, we are working on the difficult patch for now so that we can stabilize the future. Kwevo mwishimu wa raisi unakubali kwamba wa, wa Kenya alfu sabini kweli walifutwa kazi ama walikosa kazi. Sikubali, wawo ndi wamesema. Mimi nimekuambia. Na wakandikuwa na serikali. Kumanisha ni makampuni ya lio humu pegine ya lifunga wakatoka ndo wakaja wakandikuwa na serikali ama hawa walikuwa ni wakutukawa. Wacha sasa ni kuambie wale wamesema wale wa, yale wamesema. Mm -hmm. What I have told you is what I can vouch. Mm -hmm. Have I hired 56,000 teachers? Yes. Are there 120,000 people working in our housing program? Yes. Mm. So as to uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, on FKE side, you need to verify the figures. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President uh, Sam, just uh, one second. You have talked about pain and that Kenyans need to, you know, appreciate the pain and the process like uh, uh, President Kibaki did. Um, and State House and where you sit, you set the tone uh, for, for whatever government agencies and officers below you do. That's correct. And you are asking Kenyans to be patient. You're asking Kenyans to tighten their belt. But if you look at your administration and state house to, to be specific and other officials, 
look at foreign travel has been up 26% just this um, ending quarter to 1.1 billion. And Kenyans are feeling quite taxed. And the hustlers that you represent are looking around the numbers that we are discussing today. And they're wondering, um, where have we missed this? Because on one end, you're asking Kenyans to be, you know, to, 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 to bear with government, to tighten their belts. The Treasury is saying things are bad. You're saying you're preventing us from you know, going off the cliff. But on the other end, the extravagance in government um, is really still, still heavy. How do you reconcile this to the situation? I will answer you this way. Go and look at the budget. We have cut by 50% the budget for travel and entertainment, 50%, right? In the supplementary budget, just go and check the figures. That is about 11 billion shillings that we have reduced. Have I traveled more than the, the former presidents? Yes. And I have traveled not as a tourist. I have traveled to sort out the matters of Kenya. If I didn't package the, what I have packaged to salvage our country from going over the cliff, we'd be talking a different story. Would you rather I sit in Nairobi and see Kenya go down, or would you rather I go to America, and America has really supported us in making sure that we structure uh, a, a deal with uh, World Bank and IMF? Would I travel to China to make sure that we structure the bilateral deal that will see all our roads come back? Would, I, would you rather I don't travel or I travel to South Korea to sort out the problem you see in our, in our, in our, in our electricity space? that we now have money to do what the investment we have not done in the last 10 years in our, in our energy transmission. The reason why you find uh, the blackouts, you know, and is the challenge we have with our, 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 our transmission infrastructure. And, and I have found resources to, to now sort, sort that out. So would you rather I sit here or I look for the bilateral agreements that will give Kenyans an opportunity to work abroad and to work at home on uh, digital jobs. Th this is what a president is supposed to do. And I can account for every shilling okay. that I have spent on my travel. And let me say this, on the budget of State House, um, there were so many things around the state house, including the famous NMS. Part of the money that was being allocated to state house was to pay contracts, NMS contracts, and many other things, which I have said must stop. And because I want to lead the way in making sure that we manage what eventually is destroying our country called bending bills. And for your information, we have 506 billion of pending bills, you know? I need to lead the way. That's why I, I instructed staff in State House that State House must be the first one to clear pending bills. Most of the monies that have come here is to sort out NMS and all the other people that were here. And I have said those uh, infrastructure should be transferred to the parent ministries. Okay. State House must deal with State House matters. <coughs> Mr. President, we've spoken about um, three issues. We've spoken about the Kenya shilling and uh, how it's behaving against uh, the major currencies, uh, global currencies. We've spoken a bit of uh, energy and uh, what is happening in the field sector. We also touched on cost of living. We have so much to cover tonight, and I just seek indulgence that we um, can be first in our responses, uh, but also the questions. That question that you say we were on a cliff, dead cliff, and now we are no longer there. Um, recently, you posted on your X account, and you said that uh, the World Bank is giving us two trillion shillings for the next three years. The IMF is giving us over 680 billion shillings. That, in total, is about 2.6 billion a trillion shillings, based on the current exchange rate. Now, part of the reason why our debt is beyond at the ceiling that was of 10 trillion shillings by June last, uh, next year is because of what has happened to the US dollar. 
if you add what you've gotten from the two uh, global institutions, it takes us to close to 13 trillion shillings already in the next few years. Why then have a debt anchor of 55% uh, to the GDP, which are already busting? For your information, and it's a very good question you've asked, most of that money we have negotiated will actually replace. We are getting money at 2 3%. We are replacing it with money we are paying 15, 16%. And the biggest, the killer on our debt is the interest, the amounts of interest we are paying. It's not even the principal that is a big problem. It is the amount of interest we are paying. Because if you are paying interest at 16, I think the euro went to 20, 20%. at some point, you know? That is what is destroying our economy. So, we are not necessarily increasing the debt portfolio. We are substituting debt that is expensive just so that it is manageable, and then it can give us the space to be able to grow our economy. That, that is the context. Mm -hmm. So what the international community have supported me to do is to replace the euro bond, which is $2 billion, mm -hmm. yeah, $2 billion, mm -hmm of uh, very expensive money at 20% with money that we can, we can, we can manage at 2-3%. Uh, that, is, that is the difference. And by, that, by just doing that, we will save on the seven shillings we are paying for every 10 we collect to pay debt, that will significantly come down. So that is what we are, that's what I am doing because that is what is feasible as, as, as we talk as I embark on growing the economy. And growing the economy is investing in the right place, making sure that our agricultural production is up to, up to the scale. It is the reason why I am improving the whole agriculture chain. I'm building 400 markets. I promised Mama Mboga that they will do a business in a good place. Building 400 markets, I am building 47 county aggregation and industrial parks to add value to add, uh, to process, so that we get more value from our production. And if you saw this, uh, this is, when is today? Sunday. If you see, if you saw last week, we just advertised for the infrastructure of our six uh, um, special economic zones. Again, this will become engines of exports because we have to grow our exports. We need to stem imports into Kenya, but we need to increase more exports so that we can get more revenue, grow, grow jobs uh, locally. And you see, my focus is to make sure that we expand the space of people who are working. And it is going to be deliberate. It's going to be difficult, but it's going, it must be deliberate. That is why housing is one, where we are going to create jobs. Agriculture is another space in the special economic zones and the exports and that space, we're going to grow jobs. The digital space, which I have negotiated with Facebook, I've negotiated with Meta, for us to have digital jobs in Kenya. You already know that the number of people who are working in the digital space. And we are going to export more labor. As I talk to you here, there are people being trained in NYS today for people who are uh, on, the, on the space of export of labor. Because we but have to have interventions. We have to have, I mean, it is different. There are, are nurses, there are, so there are adverts that uh, the Ministry of uh, Labor uh, goes out to look for them. And Mshima Rais Kusiana na ada yu anyumba umeitaja. Mm -hmm. uh, unafahamu kwamba kuna wa Kenya wengi bado hawajarithia. Licha ya kwamba kuna agizo kutoka mahakamani na nakumbuka juzi ukiwa kwenye mkutano wa diaspora pia ulisisitiza ukasema kwamba housing levy lazima itekelezwe na kadhalika. Hebu tueleze kuna mabadiliko yoyote baada ya mahakama kutoa agizo lake na wewe kuendelea kusukuma kwamba ni sharti mkenya atozwe hii ada ya nyumba. Mahakama walisema hivi. Mahakama walisema hii ada ni sawa kama wa Kenya wote watalipa. Right? That's what they said. They said, 
it should not be discriminatory. Let Mr. President, they didn't say that. They, they, say, exactly they say it is as it is, it's discriminatory. It's discriminatory. Yes. And therefore yeah, exactly. unconstitutional. That, that's what, that's what, no, no you interpret it. The, the problem of unconstitutional was made by the media. No, they said it's null and void. So if it is unconstitutional, why did the, why did the court say it should continue, they, we should continue to collect? Because how, those how application we, for we, stay orders. How do we continue? No, how do we go, continue to do unconstitutionality? No, Mr. President, what, at least you can agree on what the court said. Yes. And the court said uh, that we've looked at everything and we arrive at the decision that this is discriminatory. Because of that, it doesn't um, agree with the Constitution or Article 10 on governance. And therefore, it is null and void. No. Kingine ambacho labda mshima rais ni kongeze, ilisema mahakama. Mahakama pia ilisema kwamba, hakuna mkakati maalum kupitia KRA, jinsi fedha hizi, zita kusanyo. Absolutely. Now, that is what they told us to fix. And that is why we now have a law in parliament. The, what the court said, the court said, there are institutions that are not paying. There are groups that are not paying, that, that are not paying in the current setup. And we have said we, we are expanding the net of the payers. It will give us actually more money so that we can do more houses, which is a very positive thing that the court has done. And they have said, establish a mechanism how this money will be, will be used. We have put a mechanism in law how it's going to be used. Let me tell you, uh, good people, you know, we can argue about this or that or the other. My question is, do we have a problem with, of housing in Kenya? Yes. Do we have a problem of jobs in Kenya? Yes. Can we sort out? Because you know, it is one thing to argue, even, even if you are a judge, and I am sure that is what went through their minds, because the judges are also Kenyans. They know we have millions of young people out there who are jobless. A story was carried, for example, in one of the media houses here. I think I saw it on KTN, saying, the crime rate in Ruiru has gone down because there are many people working in the housing program in Ruiru. I did not make the story. It was in KTN, and that is the truth. So even as you sit as a judge, even as you ask me a question as a journalist, we are discussing housing. Housing is an opportunity to do three, three major things. Number one, to create jobs. Is it a good thing for us to create jobs? These are not the children of William Ruto. These are the children of all Kenyans that will work. They will work as architects, they will work as engineers, they will work as carpenters, they will work as masons, they will work in whatever field. Some of them will be working in factories that are creating steel. Some of them will work in factories that are making for us cement to do the houses. Is it a good job? Is it a good thing? Do we have a problem of unemployment in Kenya? Yes, we need to sort it out. It has to be sorted out somehow. Number two, do we have a problem <clears throat> of industrialization? Do we have a problem of manufacturing? Yes. How do we create more manufacturing jobs, if not through programs like housing? How do we reduce, how do, do we reduce the problem of land fragmentation? where land that is supposed to be used for agricultural productivity is now being subdivided for people to live. If we provide alternative housing, we will save the land that is going to uh, settlement, we will use it to, uh, to produce food so that we stop the slide into food insecurity and we, we, we begin to tame the problem of high prices of food. Mr. President, these are, just, these are just, obvious just. and that is why I am very confident that the court will look at it, look at what is the public interest, what is the public good that comes with housing. Let me ask finally, to own a house in Kenya today, you need to have four million, five million, the simplest, the, 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 the most, the cheapest house. We are giving an opportunity through this affordable housing program for a Mamamboga or a Boda Boda, Boda guy to buy a house of 400,000 where they can pay 4,000 shillings a month and eventually own a house. I mean, we are giving dignity to every Kenyan. And let me tell you, finally, housing was a program that was in the UDA manifesto, the Kenya Kwanza manifesto, 1.5%. It was in Azimio manifesto, 1.5%. Yeah, it's not, and we all know that it is the right thing to do. 
because other countries have done it and they have made a big difference. We have had this housing thing for as long as I have been a politician, mm -hmm. but nobody has had the courage to implement it. Uh, Mr. Mr. Nobody, Mr. No, Mr. Just Mr. Wait, nobody has had the plan to do it. Have you stopped to wonder or ask what the people think, what their sentiments are about this? Because I times have. are tough, Mr. President. Put in mind, 70% are saying no to this exactly. program. That, yeah. that, just wait. I want you to go to where these Kenyans are working. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. The beneficiaries, the people who are working today, they are not even the owners. They are just working. Go and ask them. And you see, this is the beginning of a program. Give it time. Kenyans will come to appreciate that, yes, my son is working, my daughter is working. If, not, they, are, if they are not working at the construction site, they are an architect, or they work in some company, they are an accountant in some company that is doing cement and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, construction products. And let me ask you, countries like Singapore, like Malaysia, like Korea, we all have been talking about them. We've been saying, oh, you know, we were at the same level with Korea, but today they are different from us. They made tough decisions. That's why they are where they are. We have to make tough decisions if we have to catch up. I mean, we, if we want to continue to make convenient, you know, uh, uh, politically correct, uh, decisions, we will continue to remain in the same place. And I know, for example, that it is politically expensive. You know, I would be a very popular person if I ab abolished tomorrow. I said, okay, let's forget about the housing thing. People will come for Mr. President, I don't think Mr. there's anyone I, saying I that they should but I don't stop want, it. I don't want, I don't want to be. And Mr. President, I don't want, if, I don't if, want, if, if you remember, if, if you remember, Mr. President. I want to transform Kenya. Yes, if you, if and you remember. And transforming Kenya is not a walk in the park. Transforming Kenya is not going to, to be done using convenient, politically correct, popular Mr. decisions. Mr. Right. Some timing, of the decisions Mr. may President. be difficult uh, now, but they will be, they, we will all see the benefits as we go. No, no Mr. doubt, no doubt about that, Mr. That, uh, President. It is, it, it is the wrong time. We've had housing as a plan for the last 50 years. Are you telling me for the last 50 years, it, 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 the, 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 there was no correct time? It is never too late. It is never wrong to do the right thing. Uh, Mr. President, um, just let's stay to the housing fund. Um, because at, when it started and you were walking around the country and selling this dream to many Kenyans, um, you told us this was a fund and we will contribute. And if you didn't want the house or didn't benefit, at the end of the day, you would you know, get your money out at some point. Then overnight, um, in Parliament, um, it turned into a levy and a tax. Um, what really changed and what caused you to move from a fund which was really, really contributory to this discriminatory uh, fund that even the court has found to be? And does this mean that this plan changed overnight? Or what really happened to cause you to make this, this, these changes? And just to stay to, on that point, um, was it necessary that we would start all these funds together yeah. in terms of, um, it, was it a must that you start the housing fund? You are here fighting the fire of housing. Mm -hmm. Again, you start the health. medical, the, the, the medical, health uh, crisis. Mm. Before this is done, even it's off, you are dealing with the taxation, mm. you know. And because of that, nearly every government agency is now waking up with taxes. So you find you know, levies going up by 3,900%. Uh, you find um, even pets now being, uh, they're going to be taxed. And Kenyans are wondering, wh what has happened? Do you feel that you're out of touch with, with the people that you lead? Because, because then um, it will explain some of the decisions that you're doing. <laughs> Thank you very much for asking that question. Let's start with the levy. I proposed a fund. Yeah? There is a principle in Kenya today called public participation. It went to public participation. And parliament 
when coming from public participation, came and said it should instead be a levy, right? Mm. And as president, if the people said they, 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 they wanted this change into, into, into a, different, a different way of doing it, I agreed that, okay, let's go this way. But what did I do to make sure that uh, it captures everybody? We changed the design of the whole delivery of the housing so that now we have social housing for the people at the bottom of the pyramid. We'll pay four, 5,000 shillings and get a house. We have affordable housing for people in the middle who uh, will pay uh, between uh, 5,000 and 15,000 every month. But we have also included 30% of all the units to include the people who uh, largely are the contributors. You know, uh, the people who are uh, the biggest contributors, the people in the middle class, who will pay now between 15,000 uh, and 30,000. So we have made everybody a beneficiary, you know, in the chain. Again, to mitigate against what you're saying. And what have we done? Mortgage today is around 17%. What we have done is that we have now reduced the mortgage. We, we are using the fund to mitigate the mortgage that you pay. And it is now uh, gazetted that social, uh, the people who will buy social houses, their mortgage will be at 3%. The people who will buy affordable houses, their mortgage will be at 6%. And the people who will, buy, will be buying the market houses, we will reduce their mortgage by half, even you. Instead of paying 18, 17, 18 percent, you will now have an opportunity to pay at seven percent. So that way, we have carried everybody, making sure that everybody who is paying has a chance to own a house. And that is why how we are delivering. Mr. Uh, President, on the part. question of accountability, because it is good that you highlight the, what happened to the public participation, and you say that um, Kenyans said they don't want it as it was structured at that time. You also attribute responsibility to Parliament that they decided it should be a levy. Then you say, yourself, you say, let us change how it works. So I, I see a bit of distribution of responsibility. But did Kenyans tell you they wanted to be a levy or a tax? What Kenyans wanted, told me, is that they want jobs. Yeah? On that Kenyans, particular question? Kenyans, Kenyans the participation told me, was on me, the housing levy, you. Mr. President. I was, I was, I was. But you know, when Kenyans tell you they want jobs, it is you as a leader to figure out where those jobs are going to come from. And so you presented a housing and levy in the finance bill of 2023. I presented to the people of Kenya housing, and I told them I am going to create jobs using this housing. Mm -hmm. And they agreed with me. And I have created jobs using housing. The mechanism of delivery could be this way or that way. Did I make a commitment to the people of Kenya that I will, I'm going to implement housing? Yes. The, uh, did I tell them we will create jobs using housing? Yes. Have I implemented the program on housing? Yes. That, that, Have I created jobs using housing? Yes. That you did and you that are is, doing. And you but see, Mr. President, the, the sorry, delivery. sorry for this, but Mr. President, you are saying that you promised all those things and you are doing. But when people tell you we don't want it, it is yeah. too expensive for us, you change it from a levy. Um, I mean, from, from housing fund, from a contribution to a tax that is not even, you can't recoup it after the seven years. How did the translation into that become? You see, uh, Sam, you know, you, you're splitting hairs. I'm not splitting. Yes, you are. Because what you are saying, you're trying to find fault. What is the greater good? What is the national interest? I mean, to you, does creating 120,000 jobs register anything good? It is a good thing, but I'm asking does, you about does making public sure participation that an is ordinary, in the Constitution. making sure that an ordinary person mm -hmm. who would otherwise never have a chance to own a, a home, now they have a chance to own a home. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes, it does. And the process. So, you see, if, if, you, 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 if, if you pass an exam with 80%, it's an A, my brother. 
I may, I, so it may have, it may have not, it may not be a hundred percent what I wanted, yeah. but it is eighty percent what I wanted. It is doing eighty percent of the job. Surely give me some marks. Fair Mr. Enough. President, Fair the enough. question President. is at what cost? At what, co at what cost, Mr. President? Because granted, the people told you they need jobs. This means they do not have the jobs. This means they do not have money in their pockets. And in response, what you're doing is taxing them further. But let me ask you, my dear sister, the people who are working today did not have a job, right? Those are the people in the street. They didn't have a job. The people who have a job have had to pay 1.5%. 1.5% so that we can give a job to somebody else. And for your information, that somebody else that is getting a job is a taxpayer. No, they contribute to what we are eventually earn. Is it too much for us as public servants who earn a salary to give 1.5% of our salary so that somebody else, another Kenyan, who is also a taxpayer, who also deserves something. They don't have a job because the job maybe they would have, I have. But I'm being asked, contribute 1.5% so that that other Kenyan who is walking in the street can have a job. But it's not they just that, Mr. President. Too, let me just finish. They too can own a home the same way you own a home. I don't think that is no. being asked. It's not just that, Mr. President. Mr. President, I have been asked for a long time. I have been asked for a long time. I have been asked for affordable housing. I have been asked for a long time. I have been asked for health. I have been asked for taxation. Why did it come to a long time? Why did it come to Kenya? Why did it come to Kenya? Why did it come step by step? Why did it come to Kenya? Why did it come to Kenya? But it didn't come to Kenya. Why did it come to Kenya? Mambo ya health kwa mfano. It is the profiling, it is the spin that you people are, are, are many people, let me not accuse you, many people are, are spinning it. What are we doing? What are we doing in health? We are saying in health, we want to reduce those who are, and they are, by the way, the majority of the people who are, when I, when I spoke about hustlers, people thought, I was, I was not serious. I was very serious. That is why I am saying, those of us who have a job, let's contribute 1.5% good people, so that those of us who are hustlers, the people in the street, can even them, they can have a job. They now have 120,000 of them on a job. That's number one. On, this, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the health, what are we doing? We are saying three things. Number one, for the first time, for the first time, every Kenyan, even those who today cannot afford nothing, they will have a health insurance. For the first time. Number two, those who, you know, and you know the kind of unfairness that there can be. Mama Mboga is paying 10% of our income for health insurance. William Ruto, the president of Kenya, is paying zero point zero zero one percent why all we are saying is let everybody pay an equal percentage of what they earn is that too much to ask what will happen the people who are paying 500 will come down to 300 is there anybody saying that there are people who uh, there are people who will get an insurance cover who do not have no are there people who are saying that uh, those at the bottom of the pyramid will reduce their, their, their money or their contribution from 500 to 300? No. The people who are, who are talking are not talking about those things because they are not convenient. And because many of us believe don't, those people don't matter. No. I want to tell you, my friends, those people are also Kenyans. No. They matter the same way we do. Let and, us give them a chance. And, and, and Mr. President, Let us give them a that chance is, that is to also sure. participate in Kenya. Let us give that fellow, that mama, who has no chance. And you know, let me tell you, for the first time, a person who would otherwise die of cancer or diabetes or hypertension, because when they go to hospital, they are told they don't have the money. For the first time, we have a special kitty which all of us will contribute 
and give everybody a chance at life. I mean, my friends, all we are saying is, let us have a country where nobody is left behind. And we have 10 million people out there. Mwishimu Raisu mesema kwamba makato haya mapia ya abima ya afya atashugulikia kila mkenya kupata matibabu. Na kwa kenya mbao hawana uwezo wa eh, kulipia abima hii. Mtu wa shugulikia vipi kama serikali? Kapisa, you have asked me the best question. Ukisoma sheria mpia ya, eh, ya ambayo tumepitisha hizi sheria ine. Tumesema wale wa kenya ambao hawawezi kulipa Serikali ya Kenya tutawalipia kila mtu atakuwa na bima ya afya. Kuna takwimu ni wa Kenya wangapi? Na wale na wale tayari tuko na wale ambao tu wako katika program hii yetu ya ya social, social uh, cash transfer. There are about 2 million. But I, my estimate is that another 3 million will be will be in that category. People who cannot afford. Hawa pia watu karibu milioni tano watapata bima ya afya italipwa na serikali ya Kenya katika mpango mpya. Jameni na wauliza wa Kenya, hata na wao ni wa Kenya tuwafikirie. Na wale wako chini pale, karibu wa Kenya wengine karibu milioni nane tisa ambao wanalipa saa hizi eh, shilingi tano tutawapunguzia ikuje eh, shilingi eh, mia, tatu kwa mwezi. Na wale hawana uwezo kabisa tutawalipia. Na, na jambo lingine la muhimu zaidi. Waja niwaambie hii, ni ya muhimu na wa Kenya wasikie. Pesa ya NHIF kwa sasa karibu asilimia hamsini inabebwa na watu wanafanya kitu inaitwa fake claims. Mumesikia kwa mfano kuna hospitali moja hapa Kino. Umesikia? Ilikuwa kwa vyombo vya habari. Ati wanafanya operation ya upasuaji kuzidi Kenyatta, Aga Khan na hospitali zingine zingine zote combined. Ni nini wanafanya? Ukora mtupu. Ya. Yeah. Wanaenda saa zingine wanatangaza wana ati kuna medical camp. Lakini ile medical camp sio eti ya, ya, ya ukweli ni kukusanya wagonjwa. Alafu wanachukua majina ya hao watu, wanakuja wanajaza form ya NHIF, wanawalipia wao. Alafu bila ya wale kujua wanaenda kuclaim pale NHIF. Ndio sababu tumeweka sheria maalum inaitwa digital health bill ama law ambayo sasa itatusaidia kufunga hiyo mambo yote na ndio sababu sam ni kuambie ndio unaona we wafula usikize vizuri ndio unaona wale wamepeleka makesi kotini ndio wawa kwa sababu hawataki hii sheria ndio wanaendesha hii propaganda kubwa oh iko shida kubwa sana wa Kenya wapinge hii mambo ya health kwa sababu wanataka kuendelea kuiba pesa ya wananchi ama ya afya. Kwa nini usiwafungulie mashtaka Mheshimiwa Rais? Wale tayari tumewashawafungulia mashtaka na tayari tutawapeleka kotini kwa sababu we want to make sure my friends. Wakati unaona kesi iko kotini imetumwa kotini na watu ambao ni beneficiaries ya yeah, the kind of corruption that is going on in NHIF. That is why they don't want us to change the law. That is why they have uh, put together big cases to stop this, this, uh, the laws we have changed. Because these laws will change and seal the loopholes they have been using to steal our money. And I am very determined, by the way, to stop them. And I will stop them. Mr. President, because we, yes. we, 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 we have dissected the problem properly. And we want a country that leaves nobody behind. That is why we have the digital health bill. Mm -hmm. We have the social health uh, authority mm -hmm. that is going to make sure that we carry everybody uh, along. Right. And I am very confident when the court finally sits, they will see the value we have in this bill. I am not a madman. Right. And Mr. President, to, to do things yeah. that I know are not are not are not good for the country but also i am this one person you know the problem we've had in kenya uh, my dear sister is that leaders have never wanted to do the right thing we know what is right but we want to do what is convenient we want to do what is politically right i have decided as william ruto 
that we have been looking for a guy to bail the cat. I will do it. We have been uh, looking for a person to blame when we do the right thing. I'm ready to carry any blame. Okay. But I must do one thing. I must do what is right, and I must sort out our country. It is, we've been postponing this, you know? And uh, people would rather, and many people ask me, oh, you know, uh, you know the way you're going, uh, you will not get a second term. You know, let me tell you, I am very clear in my mind. I was not elected to look for a second term. I was elected to get the country out of the mess. I was elected to create jobs. I was elected to implement universal health coverage that has been on our cards forever. Mm -hmm. I intend to do precisely that. Right. Many people, including my friends who are religious leaders, they have told me, oh, you see, uh, you know, even though you said this, you must not do it, you know. That is what even the opposition is, they, 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 they wrote in their manifesto, uh, the housing, but now when it comes to implementation, they don't want to do it because they want us to continue the same thing, to lie to the people, to lie to the people. We are going to do this when you don't mean it. We're going to do this. Mr. President, we, for the first time, yes. I meant everything that I wrote in that manifesto. Right. And I have every intention to make sure that I implement it because I know finally the people of Kenya will know that I did the right thing and they will reward me accordingly. Sam, uh, maybe just a no, question that still all of remains. Right. Just a moment, uh, yeah? Yes. Because we need to transition in yeah. the next few minutes to yeah. the question of uh, corruption and the war against it. Yeah. But you saying something, and I have read the bill, and most of us have, I mean, the, the laws now, and they're yeah. quite transformative, um, so to speak. But then again, the process is as important. I have heard you on several occasions saying that uh, the contribution to the social health insurance fund will be 2.75%, so that it is equal across board. Your cabinet secretary, Nahumi Chowafula, says that, uh, I had actually said it was going to be 2.75%, but capped at 5,000 shillings. And I wonder, because the law as it is, says that the cabinet secretary shall bring regulations to the floor of the house. That has not happened. You are speaking about 2.75% without a cap. USCS is saying with a cap, we have had the experience of rates being I didn't, proposed. I didn't, Just hold on. I didn't tell you that there will be no cap. I told you 2.7% uh -huh. provide equity. What will happen is we are taking the regulations to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because that's what is required of us. So what is the rate? And many Kenyans, it's 2.75. It's 2.75. Mm -hmm. Many Kenyans will speak to it. You know? Whatever Kenyans will speak to it, they will look at it this way, they will look at it that way. It will go to Parliament. Parliament will speak to it. Finally, the product, the final product, will come from public participation. And, and that, and that what, is the essence of be? my question, Mr. President, if I may conclude it. That is the essence of the question, because Kenyans will speak. It will go to the floor of the House. Mm -hmm. They spoke on housing levy. It, it went to the floor of the House. It was changed, totally different from what was taken to the people. How shall it trust the process? You know, De that's, that's what democracy is all about. You know, I I many people actually have told me what you're trying to do in Kenya is not possible because many countries that are democratic, you cannot do this. For you to do this, you have to be like country X where the president says and it's final. You know, that is what happened in other countries. I don't want to mention countries. Yeah, this, this only happens in countries that are not democratic. But I'm telling them, I will persuade the people of Kenya. That's why I'm sitting here. I am sitting here to persuade the people of Kenya so that because I know what we are doing is not normal. And by the way, it is not that I expected that it was going to be smooth sailing. I knew it was going to be difficult. Will because what I am trying to do is transformative. What I am trying to do is to change Kenya. I am challenging the status quo. I am challenging what has always been there the norms, and that's why even you guys, they look, you look at me and you're wondering. But you know, that's how we're going to change a country. Changing a country is not a walk in the park. Tausisha wananchi katika hili swala. Kabisa, sindio nimekuambia, saa hizi tumepublish regulations. Sasa imeenda kwa wananchi. Imeenda kwa wananchi. Na je hisia za wananchi utazisikiza ama utazi kumbatia? Vile, vile wananchi walibadilisha housing levy, sinilikubali. So, ikienda bunge, ikienda kwa wananchi, wananchi wenyewe waseme... It is not citizen that changed it, it is parliament. It's parliament. 
You should go and read, I read uh, it. the public uh, participation, participation report. Uh, I read it. The majority of them were opposed to the go, introduction go of it. read it again. And Parliament took into account the views of the people who went to, uh, for public participation. And you see, Parliament is also an independent institution. I, you want me to dictate to Parliament, and I will not, uh, Sam. You know, you know that's not possible. We we have, uh, <laughs> 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 Number two, Ndelena Mjadala, sasa katika swala la vita, the officer.